Obviously, Frank, a very different situation than in Texas. Yeah, a swift response, uh, Andrea, which they should be credited for, and apparently moving right up to the second floor of this building where the gunshots were coming from. It's exactly what you should do with an uh, active shooter to engage them. But I must point out the, the significant distinction between here in Tulsa and in Texas is it appears we've had a, we have a suicidal uh, shooter. So this this individual apparently decided either well ahead of time or a, at the moment he was confronted that he would end his own life. That ultimately put an end to it. But it sounds like officers were right there, would have ended it um, uh, either way. But I have to say, we are we, we have to make that distinction between an active shooter who's decided that he is he is going to end his life if confronted or when he's done his mission. Um, and, and someone else who's going to continue on and try to take as many lives as possible. The other distinction, of course, this looks like a very targeted um, uh, killing. Uh, he had something, uh, he had some beef with someone or something in this office on the second floor. Um, it's a little bit different than randomly deciding I'm going to shoot up an elementary school, which is not making sense to, to many people at all. I was wondering, is the big difference also Tulsa, a big city, perhaps a better trained police department than Uvalde, even though we know that in Texas they had done active shooter trainings just a few months ago. So they had been briefed, they knew the playbook, they just ignored the playbook. Well, you're right. Tulsa is a completely different uh, animal than the uh, than the police department in, in Valdi. Much more active, large city, large, sophisticated police department. Uh, no stranger to violence. No stranger to shootings. They can put out a massive response quickly. And yes, training makes a difference. You know, I, I'm making a distinction here between academic classroom teaching. Someone can tell you in a classroom that you're supposed to go in, engage, go with what you've got, um, don't stop. Um, that's great, but if you don't have the money or resources to do that uh, physically in a shoot house, stack up over and over again with your fellow officers, it never becomes instinctive. It never um, accomplishes what's called fear extinction, which is that you're exposed to the stimuli so often that you just act through muscle memory. That requires physically doing it over and over again. That requires usually a large department or a department with lots of resources and money. How important is it for the initial responders to have the equipment that a SWAT team has? We know that when the Border Patrol arrived, they had the shields. They could move in a stack, what they call a stack, which you guys, you know, in terms of training do, whereas the first responders in Texas, uh, they were just grazed. I say that, you know, it's easy for me to say just grazed, but they were grazed, so there were two guys, at least two guys injured. Uh, and then they all backed off, it seems so, those 19 who were in the hallway. Yeah, I predict this is going to become a central point in the DOJ review and the DPS review, which is, what is the availability of uh, breaching tools, a shield, all the, all the various tools used to, to breach, including shotgun breaching rounds, um, where is that? Is grant money needed for small towns to put that equipment um, in at least one patrol car on every shift. I, I know plenty of police departments who have at least one car on every shift, even small towns that have all of that equipment. But most importantly, where's the master key to that classroom? And I know police departments, small towns, where the sergeant on every shift has the master key to the schools. So that, that this is gonna be the core. Why did it take so long to get into that classroom? Why did you decide this was a barricade why didn't you have equipment to go in? And then radio comms are going to come up. I, I heard an interesting clip of the mayor of Uvalde uh, last night, which was, so he was asked about 911 calls, right? And why would you be in a barricade situation? Why would you think there's no longer a threat if you have an active 911 calls coming in from kids? His, his response, something like, we didn't hear those calls. If that's true, and if that's true for the on-scene commander inside that school, something went horribly wrong with radio comms inside that building. I was wondering about that myself, and it doesn't take a whole lot of hardening money to have a master key. Thank you very much, Frank Ficluzzi.